ladies and gentlemen, shall we five home with our first Bright Club act this evening? Yeah. Yeah. Our first Bright Club of tonight! Yeah. Let's go well then for the incredible, the wonderful Mr. Chris Moore! Yeah. Yeah. Good evening. <laughs> this is not the first time I've stood on this stage. <clears throat> The last time I did it, I came out of that door and immediately came to the conclusion that I had made a huge fuck up. <laughs> Three and a half years later, I'm standing here tonight and I am absolutely 100% sure that I've made a huge fuck up. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. It's because I'm not meant to be up here at all. I'm meant to be sitting down there with you guys. My job for tonight was to organise this event. I was putting together a lineup which had predominantly PhD students. The idea being that we would give them exposure to public engagement, we would get the research out there, and... God, that even got over. <laughs> and the other thing I was trying to do was put together a lineup which was at least 50% female. Now, you will gather that I am neither PhD student nor am I female. So like an awful lot of my scientific plans, I really haven't got the results I was hoping for. <laughs> I did try though. I tried to get involvement from other female academics. I approached a female professor who specialises in concrete. But she said her material was far too hard to make funny. <laughs> and then I thought about it again and I thought, you know what? What kind of a scientific lineup would it be if we didn't have input from a baldy middle-aged white man, right? <laughs> so the other reason I'm here tonight is to cheer myself up. You'll have noticed a few weeks ago that the Chemistry Nobel was awarded. For some inexplicable reason I seem to have been overlooked. <laughs> I've always thought I was destined to win a prize. Um, when I was a PhD student, I remember working in the lab. I remember my supervisor came into the lab and he was watching me working away and he said to me, Chris, if you carry on like that, one day you're gonna win a Darwin Award. <laughs> I was humbled. I'm guessing from the name that these are for biological chemists, that's what I do, right? But I can't help noticing that everyone who's won one seems to be dead already. <laughs> That's a little bit disappointing, but I'm sure my kids will be proud. <laughs> so anyway, the work that I've been doing over the past few years has been collaborative. So I've been working with colleagues in medicine here in Edinburgh, and I've also been working with industry partners in the form of GSK, based down in Stevenage. Collaboration is the way to go, people. You let the talented people do the work, and then you come in at the end and claim the credit. It's fantastic. <laughs> What we've been doing is we've been looking for small molecules that might be drugs to treat a disease called acute pancreatitis. Now, you may not have heard of acute pancreatitis, but it's, it's a nasty business, really. If you contract it, then you are looking at major inflammation. You're looking at your organs beginning to fail. If you're lucky, you're looking at a short stay in intensive care. If you're unlucky, you're looking at a rather longer stay in a coffin. <laughs> The disease itself is prevalent, or it, you know, it can be more prevalent in people who have unhealthy lifestyles. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about alcohol abuse. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about poor diet. We're talking about obesity. Well, we're talking about being Scottish, aren't we? <laughs> so this collaboration, this involvement with industry, it's quite interesting because an awful lot of the, the meetings that we have are conducted by teleconference, which means I spend half my time on the phone talking to a group of about 20 people sitting around a, a boardroom table somewhere in Stevenage. That has its problems. There are times when you can hear them, but they can't hear you. You seem to spend half your time introducing yourself and saying hello to every single person that's sitting around the table individually. And the other thing that's interesting about working with industry is they like to keep things under their hat. They won't tell you very much about what you're doing. So I've been working with these small molecules for years now without even knowing what they look like, which is kind of disconcerting from a structural chemist's point of view. But I found out, but you can't tell them how I found out. What I found out was that my colleagues, the guys in medicine here, must be making molecules, and these molecules must 
have a scaffold, which is a five-member tetracyclic ring. Stick with me if you're not a chemist. <laughs> with an arsenic atom in it. And they must be sending these molecules down to GSK. How do I know this? Because I was waiting on the end of the phone for a teleconference to start up. They clearly didn't know I was there, but they'd obviously just received a package of these sent down by my colleagues in medicine. Because I heard one of them say to someone else, there's that arsehole from Edinburgh. <laughs> I would like to take a minute for the non-chemists in the audience and just broadly explain what that joke meant. <laughs> just in case you didn't get it. So anyway, this collaboration was going splendidly. I got on well with them, they seemed to like me. Um, so much so that I was really surprised when they phoned me up one night, and, uh, well not one night, one day, um, and said, Chris, we'd like you to test some drugs for us. I thought, oh, happy days. <laughs> I'll get the Doritos in, I'll look at my copy of Dark Side of the Moon, what are we testing? <laughs> It kind of went a little bit quiet after that. It appears I may have slightly misinterpreted what they were meaning. But these things happen as you get older. And I have to say, over the past year or so, I'm beginning to be much more aware of my own mortality. Back in January, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. You can laugh if you want, I really don't mind. <laughs> Thank you. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's a chronic illness, it's uh, inflammatory bowel disease, it's pretty shitty. <laughs> Literally. But the really good thing about getting that is that my consultant has suggested to me that I have a new diet, and that new diet means that I'm not allowed to eat fibre, so no more food and veg. <laughs> Couple that with the immunosuppressive pills that he's given me, and I'm now finding myself at high risk of attracting or contracting acute pancreatitis. <laughs> but I'm really not worried about that. If that happens, then I've got this stash of shit that GSK have sent me that I can just dip into when I want to. But I've also thought about trying to treat the illness with a little bit of alternative or complementary therapy. Um, I've been trying homeopathy. Well, I say homeopathy, I've been drinking a lot of water. <laughs> And it was also suggested to me that for gastric problems, it's worth giving yoga a shot. I mean, I'm willing to give it a try, but it seems like a stretch. <laughs> so I'm going to finish off with a joke about Heisenberg. I did this the last time I was here, and it got a laugh. If science is reproducible, then it's going to get a laugh again, right? So anyway, Heisenberg's driving down the autobahn, and he gets pulled over by the police. And he rolls his window down, and the policeman says to him, Sir, do you know how fast you were going? And he says, No. Well, we clocked you doing 152 kilometres an hour. And Heisenberg turns and says to him, Fucking thanks, now I'm lost. <laughs> Thank you very much.